Video games. They're an art form, they're a pastime, and they're a business. Much like the film and print industries before it, the games industry is driven by market research, boardrooms, and sales figures. Early on, a precedent was established in the industry that young straight men were the primary gamer culture, and that standard of focus has remained in the decades since the rise of the video game. A cycle has been created here. Young men are presumed to be the majority of gamers, and they're catered to and advertised to, and as such, become more and more of a self-fulfilling prophecy. However, despite setbacks as a community, slowly we are seeing more and more inclusion of different gender identities and sexualities, and it's becoming more the norm for games to include options for every player when possible, and for every possible audience to be taken to, into account in mainstream games, as well as independent games and emerging format titles such as VR and smartphone games. In the next few minutes, we'll be walking you through a few aspects of inclusion in the games industry with some examples of games that tell the story of progress and gaming culture. Take a look. Women in games that are demographically pointed towards men are usually there for the sole purpose of being eye candy or to be a damsel in distress. They usually don't develop as characters and are only there to make the male character feel powerful, heard, and satisfied. MMOs, fighters, and games that tend to draw in a large crowd are where you can find prime examples of over-sexualized women. There are many examples of this in the extreme, from dating sims that turn women into an objective to conquer, or games like GTA that glorify strip clubs as an interactive pastime. Laura Croft was considered to be an unrealistic expectation of what a woman looks like. The game developers have rebooted the series to fit the expectations of the ever-growing female fanbase. Laura Croft, in the most recent models of the game, have been, has been dressed more realistically to depict a real woman in a real survival situation. Games such as the newer reboot of Tomb Raider have shown that the industry is willing to adapt. Pioneers in development have been showing the community for years what it can mean to have an inclusive story and inclusive player choice. More recently, more and more companies are willing to do the same, and even in games with cinematic scripts where player choice isn't as prevalent. They're including a broader representation of real people in the games. Assassin's Creed took heat for a lack of female representation and included the option to choose your gender at will in the newest installment. After years of a complete lack of women, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has included one of the strongest sets of female player characters in any modern game. These changes of heart may have been recent, but some companies have been setting the bar for years, being applauded by many fans but experiencing backlash from the repressive outliers that could very well have been the cause of the delay for the developers. Companies like Bioware with their Mass Effect and Dragon Age franchises have long included male and female player character options along with multiple romantic pro partners of varying genders throughout the storylines. The infamous Femme Shep female option for the Mass Effect series, though not very well represented in marketing materials, showed a AAA title that wasn't afraid to accommodate every fan with the constraints of the storyline. The cinematic linear nature of some games, much like the film counterparts, does limit how much each developer can include in some situations, but it's always possible to include well-rounded, non-player characters to represent a player base. Games like Bioshock Infinite, where Elizabeth could be considered to be the protagonist despite being largely unpayable, or Firewatch, where the female co-star is the player's lifeline and intellectual equal, show that games can be great while still being inclusive. In all, we've seen a representative history of the inclusion of women and LGBT individuals in the video games industry. Much like in other facets of society, women and the LGBT community are underrepresented in video games. The ongoing proliferation of these communities, just like race, cultural diversity, and disabilities, help legitimize the community and make it more representative of our diverse society. Movies and literature have had the same hurdles to overcome, and the inclusion of fewer one-dimensional token characters and more developed, central ones from my diverse background helped take the medium into this century and become an important part of our cultural artistic lexicon. Like the games we're highlighting, we know our video will have both its fans and its enemies. We welcome discussion on this video as it only helps to further the conversation on diversity in games. Events like Gamergate are unfortunate, but the one thing we can't take away from these negative events and comments is that we've raised awareness for the plight and further our community towards acceptance and fair representation.